But this Dargan only devours goblins, or only wants to devour goblins. We could have a 5 minute 8 8. I don't think we goblin tribal. Voracious Dragon reads a lot like Air Elemental to me, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think I'm taking Rupture Spire and Fiery Fall. And just like setting up for five colored dirtle maybe. Brutality's okay. It's better in constructed than limited for sure. Hey GLM64 leaks this up in 13 months. Werewolf is pretty good. I think I want this Wretched Griff and this Werewolf thing. Oh man, does that Priest pull me in a very different direction? We could take Priest and Footlight Fiend out of this pack. God, we've, we've drafted like so many fucking shitty Rakdos decks today. And every time I'm like, man, we should really just be doing a five color dirtle nonsense. And now here we are, <laughs> getting Priest of Forgotten Gods. Now now the Moto Gods are like, well, here's some good Rectos cards. I'm like, oh man. Oh man. All right, I'm gonna take Shark to Crab. I'm gonna take Shark to Crab and the stupid Guild Gate. And that'll be fine. Oh, damn. All right, let's ramp. Let's get a ramp on. Do we take Sifter Worm too? That gains life, right? Yeah, I'm into it. Traveler's Amulet, also an option there. Let's take Edge of Autumn out of this pack. the rise of canopy. I'm not sure how much damage I want to deal to myself is my only issue with that. Cowards can't block warriors. Might take it anyway. Riddle's okay. Probably just grabbing uh, Dreamscape and Dead Gun here. Dreamscape is a good one. Fixes, ramps, does everything. Giant Killer is a great one. Not sure about Improbable Alliance. We're not really drawing cards here. I think we take either Scorching Dragonfire or maybe Golden Egg. Get our Cantrip on. Golden Egg kind of fixes. It's that temporary fixing, right? If you need repeated use of a, of a color. It's not actually that helpful. But cantripping still helps you hit your land drops. Yeah, I'll take it. I suppose Archon's reasonable. This deck probably not playing multiple spells in a turn. I'm not sure what else we're grabbing. Maybe deliberate. Maybe just a cantrip. Scry two draw card. Yeah. Like you do. Oh, 
There's a guild gate here. I'm gonna take a guild gate. Watching the mist is solid. I take the giant. I think either of those could work. What's up, man? The giant's kind of cool with the, the smoldering werewolf. Regal, Regal Force would have drawn us in a very different direction. Snake Form's reasonable. It's a reasonable filler card. Makes some very hard to answer cards pretty answerable. Mulder Hulk to get back the, the Horizon Canopy, yeah. God, this set was so fucking weird. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Talk about a powerful pack, huh? I'm gonna grab this guard mage. I'm gonna grab this massacre girl. So Hedron Crawler ramps, but it doesn't fix. I think I think we still draft it and just take it in the river. I kind of don't hate recross the paths. Just like get a random land. And then clash and maybe maybe get a pack. <laughs> Could fix. Could also super not. Let's go with Blight Soil Druid and uh, and then yeah, recross. Ooh, this thing. We fucking crushed with this thing before. Hey, give me that. Uh, do we have humans for dire tactics? Might be good enough anyway. Oh, Farfinder. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. It's not ramp, but it is fixing. Azorius Chancery and maybe Verdant Eidolon are the two that I'm looking at here. I don't know what Muse Vessel does. Four mana for an artifact. Three target player exiles a card from their hand. Activate this only time you play this a sorcery. And then you can play cards from it. That's actually super cool. In a five color deck, you can actually like play their cards too. So I'm definitely taking the Crew Land because Crew Lands are super good. And I think I want to throw Muse Vessel in the sideboard. Just in case you play a control mirror. Oh, Rise and Fall is dope though, isn't it? Yeah, this is a real strong one. Yeah, this one makes the the difference between Rise Fall and Muse Vessel. They're both powerful cards, but Rise Fall makes our main deck, and Muse Vessel does not. Is the difference there? Dark still ing it, love it, love it. It's also reaping so. I like both of those. I forget what Chrome Silk Drake does. Nine mana for three four affinity for artifacts. Flying. When it does battlefield reveal the top three cards of your library, put all artifact cards in your hand, the rest in your graveyard. Probably not a good card here. Probably not great. Should we get that vial? <laughs> get that vial. Put in a sifter worm. I think I actually like the Reapin' So. Cloud of Fairies is an option. Cloud of Fairies and Snap actually make mana with our Karoo land. They can actually be used as like mini rituals. Kinda cute. Yeah, let's grab them. Let's grab them both. Either Vile plus Cloud of Fairies would've been ramped too. We can snap back the Cloud of Fairies. Oh man. This pack's kind of sicko. Rogue Refiner for that. Sweet, sweet value. Spire Patrol also decent. I think I like Caught in the Brights. What does this do? Whenever a non-token artifact is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield unless they Okay, yeah, we don't have, we don't have that much. <laughs> Sack our fucking egg, make them pay three. I'm 
then I'm not sure if I want Spire Patrol or Caught in the Brights. Spire Patrol, Spire Patrol, not a bad one to sack like Wretched Griff or whatever. And Flyers are always good. I think we need more like actual factual removal though. Nice. So this looks like a mess, but I think our fixing is actually kind of good. I think it worked out. Probably not playing the Blight Steel Dru the the Blight Soil Druid, just because it's hard to have it down on turn two. But I'm and and I'm not sure if the Massacre Girl makes the cut or if we just keep it four colors. Massacre Girl is like stupid good though. Maybe just worth playing. The fact that Dreamscape Artist double fixes, and we have like Rupture Spire and Dark Stealing it here, means that it's probably just fine. Alright, I'm gonna take a quick break to go to the bathroom. And I'll be back in a couple minutes. I think this is a good one. I think we got a good deck.
Oh man, this is fun. This is gonna be a fun mana base to build. So I'm gonna pull the lanes out first so we have a better count. Don't make ourselves do the math. I think the egg probably comes out. Maybe we keep snap and cut the cloud of fairies. Considering cutting the the, the dead and gone. I guess rise fall kind of works well with the the cycling on cloud of fairies. Stink form starts in the sideboard. It's not like we have like pingers and stuff. It just helps, like, I don't know, like Rogue Refiner eat something in combat. It's kind of cute with Massacre Girl. It's also kind of good with Crash Crasher, right? If they block Crasher and make it a 1 1. We already have Overwhelming Splendor, we have a better version. Yeah, and then I wasn't sure if I was going to play the egg. I don't know if the egg is worth playing versus, like, a land. I think black is almost free here, with Dark Stilling it and Farfinder and, uh, and Rupture Spire. But let's actually look at the mana. Massacre Girl is really good, and one of the ways that this deck loses is to the opponent going wide. It also pairs really, really well with Overwhelming Splendor. So if the way you lose is because you don't have any sweepers in your deck, then splashing for a sweeper might well, make sense, especially because we have so much fixing. We don't need to play Massacre Girl on 5, right? We just need to play it before we die. All these planes. <laughs> we definitely don't need all these planes. Yeah, we have five white sources base. Probably need more blue. One, two, three, four, five, and then like six, seven potentially. Is this enough green? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ish. We have some solid green fixing between Edge of Autumn and Reap and Sow. I kind of want more, one more green source. Yeah. Alright. We'll just play 17, I guess. 17 is kind of a lot for this deck. We don't have a lot of ways of, like, filtering through the flood, if we are flooding. And a lot of our, um, a lot of our cards are giving us mana. So I think 16 is closer to correct, but uh, but that's okay. A lot of our cards also give us value. A lot of cantrips. I guess there's some filtering here, huh? The Surveil on Watcher being a big one. Deliberate Scries, yeah. All right. I can fix once. I, I understand how egg works. I understand what egg does. I think replacing a land with it is a mistake. 
remember that these basics... So, so, so a permanent source of mana is going to let you cast multiple spells, which maybe, maybe don't need for something like Massacre Girl, because it's just a one-time thing. The other thing about the basics is that we get them with Dreamscape Artists, we get them with Edge of Autumn, and we get them with Farfinder. Right? So having the right basics is really important for all of those fixers. It's a lot more important to be able to like activate Dreamscape Artist and get Double Swamp. Because you may or may not actually draw the, the Golden Egg if you're only playing one Swamp, right? It might not actually match up that well. Dreamscape Artist might also like end up sacrificing a basic, so like having an extra copy is really important. The Golden Egg also isn't like fixing for these early turns, so like replacing a forest or an island doesn't make any sense. Because you want to play like Edge of Autumn on two some games. Yeah, if you're relying on Golden Egg for fixing, it probably means you're gonna lose, because then you don't have that mana on the, the turn after, right? The more universal fixers your uh, your five color deck has, the better the mana. And we have a lot. We've got Rupture Spire, Farfinder, and Dark Stealing it. It's a really good sign. And then some green cards that can uh, that can fix for various colors too. Even Dreamscape Artist, right? Firefall can land cycle, etc. Does Cube start soon? Yes. Uh, Arena Cube starts tomorrow. And uh, Supreme Vintage Cube starts on Wednesday. And then the week after Wednesday, regular Vintage Cube starts. So very soon. You think chat's greedy? Maybe. Some folks, <laughs> some folks are talking about like cutting our sweeper and other folks say. Eh? You know, some people are more greedy and some people are less greedy than me. When is the tourney being played? Are you talking about the, um, the cube off? This is happening the, the 26th and the 27th. So 14 days from now. What a Supreme Vintage Cube. Every time they put Supreme on the title, it just means that your deck is going to be only first and second picks. So like right now we're doing Supreme Chaos. So you open a pack, you take a first pick, you take a second pick, and then you get a fresh pack. Supreme Vintage Cube means the decks are going to be really high powered. It means there's going to be a ton of power going on. Like the, the resulting decks are more busted than playing actual Vintage. be pretty sweet for a bit. You can get duplicates, yeah. Supreme Vintage is announced, yeah. It is happening on uh, Wednesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think the best strat for Supreme Vintage is going to be aggro. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. It's not fair though, I've, I've played it before. The best decks I've seen were like four time walk, multiple soul rings. Uh, I had one that had like six draw sevens and two fast ones, and like a bunch of moxen. in. 
This tech kind of implies that they've got a burn spell in their hand. I don't know if it should adjust anything we're doing, though. Wait, I don't want to spend my hold next turn. What have I played it before? They did it with, uh, not Gen Con, but with, I think, one of the PAX events. The PAX Online. Did a few of them. Gate, but Horizon Canopy might be correct. correct to play more than 40 in Supreme Vintage. Um, I mean, never say never, right? I think rarely. I think even, even more rarely than usual. Maybe your opponent's only win condition is brain freeze. I think disruption gets a lot worse when your opponent's killing you on turn one. <laughs> you just don't get a turn two to play that him to Turok. Force Will's obviously gas. Kinda of seems like the odds of my 6-6 six, six surviving go up drastically if I kill this loyal Cathar. Seem real keen on, on that block. I'm like attacking into the crash arm. I'm a little worried about getting burned out. If they wanted to point a burn spell at my crasher, right? Yeah, I think I'm making a Jazz Knight be a once a week thing. I was actually, I actually mentioned to you earlier, I was saying it should be Legacy Knight. Just two Jazz and Legacy. The Barra. The Barra tribute. Once a week.
I'm leading up a mountain here. <laughs> Pretty scary. Maybe I had to le let them kill the crash room. What are the odds on this resolving? Versus them, like, having Bolt plus Ping. Oh shit! Well, that makes me a lot more hopeful. If they just have another, another Fireball, it doesn't matter, but... I mean, they could have grasped for one more, right? Skedaddle, 1696, thanks to the sub, thanks to the eight months. I think we just pass. Leave Giant Killer up in case they have some weird threaten effect. Two mana up, sure. Like Magma Jet on. They just need to find three more damage. If they can find a three damage burn spell with this Magma Jet, should we track the Scry? Seems like there's a tank going on here. Seems like they're thinking real hard about these two cards. Bottom, bottom. That's what we want to see. Can they rip it? They cannot. Yes! I think they should have done the, uh, the X damage spell for two more, and then set a stop on their upkeep for the Magma Jet. I don't know what they were drawing towards, but... I think that gives them a better chance. Better chance of finishing me. Yep, looks great. The dino's pretty good. Oh, the Crasher? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a reason we're playing that one, huh? They basically just, like, can't let it connect ever. good just as a blocker. 2-3. The issue is I don't think it's better than any of the cards we're playing. I think the stuff we're doing is, is too important. My face on Doctor Strange is solid over the Cube Avengers. The angle of J Bro's head. If we had a second land, I would keep this just off the strength of Dark Slilling it, but we're gonna set it back. The long clarinet solos, yeah. Um, The, uh, the clarinet player is actually the star of the show. The artist that we're playing is, is Doreen's Jazz, New Orleans. She's played with some, some orchestras before, but mostly just done like a lot of street music. 
just years and years. I was telling Chad earlier that she had 25 albums uh, available for digital download, and I got all of them. They've all been pretty great so far. But if you check out, check her out on YouTube, you can see her doing those those super long, crazy good solos. Does jazz ever use cowbell? I think you can do any instrument with jazz. What is the Cube Avengers thing? Yeah, we're doing a charity, charity cube off. Jim Davis made a team, and uh, and and Team J Bro made a team. Kind of hate what I just did there. I do get the second red source for Crasher. That is why I played the Deliberate, so if I had found a comes to play tap land. We lose the um, Universal Fixer, though. I didn't want to keep both lands on top. The issue right now is this Reap and Sow has to get me black mana and white mana. It's hard, hard for that to happen. Maybe I just don't even cast it next turn. Who gets the land that I just bottomed? We are on Team J-Bro, you guessed it. Yeah, the teams are Emma Handy, Kenji, Jim Davis, and Zach Allen versus LSV, me, J-Bro, and Gabriel Nassif. Fashion 22 cubage. I think because Massacre Girl is just like the stone best card we could draw, I think I'm supposed to grab a swamp. We only really need double white for Splendor too. So this is probably okay. as two Hall of Famers. Yeah. What's more what's more important than being in the Hall of Fame for me is is that Nasif and uh, LSV have experience with the Vintage Cube, right? LSV in particular. Obviously, them being in the Hall of Fame doesn't hurt. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Tap extra, like a fish. You think J-Bro is worth two other players in the competition? Maybe. Kenji's pretty fierce. Emma is also like very versed in a. Uh, in the ways of the cube. Kenji's also done a lot of those marathon streams, you know? Like last time... Oh God. God. Well, this doesn't look like one we win, does it?
you don't think I'm Kenji's as good as me? Well, the last time um, Cube Season was around was not very long ago, and both me and Kenji did 24-hour streams. And I ended up with six Cube trophies. And Kenji, through, through Miracle or Cheats, I'm not quite sure how, ended up with seven, so... The last time uh, Jim and uh, J Bro did this, Jim ended up scooping. I think they were doing a three day, and Jim scooped um, like two thirds or three fourths of the way through the competition when J Bro had like seven trophies. What I'm getting at is I think there's a chance that uh, the Numont does about as well as J-Bro, or myself for sure. Everyone, everyone in this is good. Everyone in this has a chance to go on a tear. And Vintage Cube is high variance enough that you can always just hit a losing streak. Yeah, we're gonna block to sack or to soak as much damage as possible. So even though it looks like a bad block, the Dreamscape on a 2-2 here. I think it's correct. I guess we keep the um the rogue refiner. I guess if we take one more damage and block a human than we would rep lethal on the crack bag. I think we can just play a blocker though. They're trying to fireball me for the win. They're now a damage short. I agree, Taco Farmer. I mean, obviously, I mean, we're definitely gonna crush them. We're definitely, <laughs> we're definitely gonna murder them real good. Dang. I think we're Dob right. Block, block, block. I guess we're not. This is not the card I wanted, though. At this point, pretty much any burn spell kills me. for our hero. Unless your hero is the opponent, in which case it is looking great. Oh shit! Oh shit! Attack both. Attacking both would have put me dead on board. When the beast makes a token, it does it for all of the damage lumped up, so it would have made it 12-12. We would have tapped two blockers and made one blocker. The way that I did it, I tapped one blocker and made another blocker, so it replaced itself. We did that, like, the, the literal first game of this match, I think. Know your hero. <laughs> how am I doing? I'm doing well. QP entry, man. If they let me exchange QPs at like an absurd rate, I would do it. Like 50 QPs for an event ticket. I'd be like, yep, yeah, pushing that button. <laughs> 50 QPs to buy into a.
combined to a draft. I think that's just me, though. I think I'm an extreme minority there. Which is why I demand to be catered to. I thought this was America. <laughs> Do I just cast the Massacre Girl? Might help them kill my crab. If they can't, though, then we have two 4-4s. Four That's way better than one 4-4. Four four. Yeah, two 4-4s. Four four Gopot says that a QP equals 0.8 ticks. God, I wish. I'm gonna chop down your fucking bird. <laughs> Just... Should be nesting in the beanstalk. How do we feel about recross the paths here? I'll bottom that one too. We need one more mana, or a couple more mana, I guess, to activate Shark to Crab in response. Let's go ahead and cycle. Immediately regret the cycle. Oh, wait, no, we have seven, right? Yeah, let's cast it. Is this too cool? Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm short, I'm short. Oh, because it's not seven, it's fucking eight, of course. Silly meme. on tap of the dreamscape. We can discard Caught in the Brights. We're not the... Quartzwood. Yeah, it looks like jamming an aggressive Massacre Girl helped us close that game out a little earlier. This is overwhelming splendor. What if Cloud of Fairies is better than Snap? <clears throat> we did see the one creature, we saw the bird. I guess Snap's okay against the bird. I want to live the dream and uh, use Snap to ramp up my Karoo land. This hand seems fine. The, uh, the Rise Fall isn't going to be doing anything for a minute. But we do have this dead gun to kill something. Dead. Quartzwood. I 
Yeah, it's kind of what my five color decks have been looking like at as now. Just like a bunch of value beaters. I talked about this earlier, but the, the weakness, the weakness of my five color list is that they've been losing to like swarms. Been losing to good pressure. So I'm really happy to have Massacre Girl in this version. Even if we're like basically just playing black for her. Well, we see a lot more cards with this deck, Mat Man. We turn through a lot of cards with this one. And the games are gonna last longer with that black deck. Glad you enjoyed the tunes, Dusty Bunny. You think this deck's better than the Stip the other day? Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. <clears throat> the Stip had a couple weird ones, right? Like I was. Well, he was like a couple of cards short of a good deck, I think. Some kind of medium filler. And the mana base was slightly worse, too. The long tank makes me want to, like, call the bluff and block, but... If we get to connect with Quartzwood, we kind of just win, has been my experience. Why is Quartzwood only five mana? I mean, it's double red and a green, right? Casting Shark to Crab might be better than this. Keep it land on the top. Let's just go Shark to Crab plus Adapt next turn with 8 mana. I think I like that. Assuming we're not Rise to Falling, but even if we are Rise to Falling, then we can also Deliberate plus Shark. I mean, it just works either way. Ooh, 2040. That feels good. That feels saucy. Can we finally get a second trophy? Yesterday, I think we did like almost all two in ones. Big ol' stretch. Is this the dream? Snap ramping us to, to Splendor. Apparently five colors best. Playing five colors sets you up to like be able to draft whatever bombs you open. So I do I do think it is good within this format. I've had luck with blue red tempo too. Just like aggressive red creatures and burn, and then blue gives you card draw encounters. As a you know universal archetype, it kind of works because red and blue are doing the same things. Regardless of the set. Kind of like blue-white flyers is sort of universal. So we could snap into Elite Guard Mage this turn. I think I want to save the snap for Splendor if I can. No land? No land for them?
<laughs> yeah. We didn't get to put cast a splendor, but you know, worth rude, <laughs> a little rude. <laughs> The old green LD, yeah. Green's had it land destruction for a long time. Like, what's that old Thaum? Let's see, there's, there's Acid Moss, there's Ice Storm, Plow Under. I'm thinking of Thermal Karst. Thermal Karst is the one. I like having Masker Girl in the opener against a white opponent. The issue is the hand, right? The mana. We don't, like, don't even, can't even cast our the one card we have. I'm just gonna keep this, and I'm just gonna draw like a mana rock or something. It's all gonna work out just fine. We can cast all of our early game stuff at this point. Creeping mold, yeah, yeah. I'm jealous of that relic. I'm super fucking jealous of that relic. At least we have lane drops for days. Ice Storm was an alpha, yeah. When was alpha? Was that one of the. Was that set pretty early? Mmm, they're getting me back. That is some just desserts. Loyal Cathar here. Uh, this is the finals. We are up a game, but game two is looking a little rough. Splendor does not seem good against Dictatophilia, does it? Make all those tough 3-3s. Three oh my god. why they're in the finals now. Lingering Souls plus Dictate. Do we have an answer to that Dictate? It doesn't look like we do. Just zero disenchants. Lingering Souls, right? I don't know if we cut Rise and Fall for it. But I wanted to make sure I got it in. Man up 
appeals to me. Regal Force is gonna be a seven mana five five that draws a card in, in like almost every case. Does not seem great. Chance Ream. or not to pay echo. Looks like they're paying. Some nice pressure here. Oh, it's a fucking tab. I was getting a commercial on some fucking tab. Oh man. I hope that doesn't gunk up my YouTube VOD. I guess I can cut that one little bit out. Do I want Splendor? I kind of think I don't.
Oh shit, what up? Hey Mike ABC, thanks for the solid next so 41 months. Appreciate it. Stack squad, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Should be a sweet event. We're gonna be raising uh, money for Doctors Without Borders. This is super well rarity. Very highly rated. And they've been doing a lot of really important work uh, regarding like COVID relief and such. Nice. Nice little trophy there. 